Of course, now with the Guns N' Roses. Back in full force. Dude, they're, <coughs> yeah. Have you been to one of their shows recently? Hey, well, I, I opened four of them. Um, really? How'd that Last year. I got off just in time right before stuff was about to get, get, to get thrown at me. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you were confusing the fans a little yeah. bit? It went that well. Yeah. I could sense it. It was just about to, stuff was, was just, just about, about, to, about to turn. Right when I got off of there. So I, I made it out alive. Yeah. But it was great seeing them. Um, yeah. I mean, really incredible. Uh, I had never seen them back in the day. Of course, you couldn't help but see their videos and hear their music and all that stuff. But, yeah. but actually seeing them now, you know, play for three hours and, yeah. you know. I went those, to a bunch of those. Yeah. It, it was amazing. Yeah, I, even I, when it was Axel in the three guitar onslaught that was none of the other mem real members Bumble, or whatever. Bumblefoot. Dude, I, I gotta Thomas say, Stinson. I thought those were killer shows. <laughs> I know, I saw one at Governor's Island and I was yeah, expecting yeah. it to be like, like I was expecting to go and be kind of like okay, but it, it blew me away. I was like, the, okay, this rocks. Wow, you know. But I'm sure with real the uh, actual members of the band. Is it true they're recording new music? That I don't know. I heard they are. It would it would make sense. Yeah, um, I certainly would. I would too. Although the way it's going with those guys, I mean, I'm sure they could just play those the same songs that they've been playing. Mm -hmm. and fill giant stadiums. I mean, we were playing in front of like 70, maybe 80,000 people, like huge That's soccer amazing. stadiums in Europe. What was that like? Was that the most you've ever played in front of? Well, you did with the Queens of the Stone Age, probably played some huge gigs too. I but played, that was like... I played a lot of festivals, like even in the 90s with the trees, yeah. like, you know, uh, Reading... Roskilde, you know, some of those are like 60, 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. So, that, you know, but those shows are like playing in front of nobody, really, because they're so big, it's not. Right. Like, I'd rather play in front of that many people that I don't know than in front of like 20 people that I do know. Yeah, it's more nerve wracking playing in front of 20 people in a little room than it is playing in front of like 50,000 people way more nerve-wracking it is because there's just such a like there's such a disconnect when there's some when there's a sea of people there's, yeah it takes the stakes away on some level it does because it's like yeah there's so much mythology you're 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 a huge cartoon character at that point in some ways for me it's just like yeah, it's just like playing in front of nobody it's like rehearsing yeah. because a usually when my band's up there not too many people are paying strict attention right and uh, B, I'm usually playing like 20, 30 minutes top, so. Yeah. Unless it's like a festival. I, we, my band does, you know, festivals every summer in Europe. And not, uh, not always huge ones like those, but uh, you know, always much bigger than you playing them. Yeah, but like a not Club. huge festival, still 5,000, 10,000 people or something like that. Still huge. Yeah, even if you're like in the tent at Pukal Pop, you're playing in front of 20,000 people. Yeah. So, which yeah. I've done with Rosser, just he and I. <laughs>